I am very excited to be with you today. Thank you so much for allowing us to come there with you into your living room or wherever you happen to be. Uh, I just want you to know this is an honor for me to be there with you, be able to visit a little bit in the middle of our weeks. And um, uh, I, I just let me let me start by just making some observations. Um, as I sit here in this church uh, and look out the window, by the way, it's been a little crazy out there. The wind's been blowing and the rain's been blowing and it's it's uh, it, it's looks a little dangerous out there. But I want everybody to be safe and and uh, it's calming down a little bit. But uh, let me let me make some observations as I just stop and be still and, and think about, I was thinking about Sunday uh, here at our church, the Community Church of Mount Pleasant. We, we officially launched our church uh, last Easter, so it's, it's been less than a year since we officially launched our church. And I, I, was, just, I was just reflecting on Sunday, and uh, man, as I watch, uh, you know, we drive up and and uh, drive up the driveway and see our signs and, and then cars are here and people keep coming and Sunday we had 168 people here it, folks that's crazy that that's I, I don't even know how to explain that I don't even know how to feel about that I mean when, when we lo the Lord led us to come out here and, and launch a church we had a handful of people uh, we didn't have any idea what would happen, what could happen, what the potential was, we, we just didn't know. Um, I, I had ideas, thoughts, probably apprehensions about what are we doing? You know, what, what, if, what if nobody comes? You know, what, what do we do? What if there's no money to pay the bills? What if, you know, uh, and, and you have all those thoughts. And then Sunday I just, I just stopped. And I just uh, I left, I cried. I thought 168 people have dri driven up here to Mount Pleasant off Dutch Road in the back of middle of nowhere to, to come to a church and sing and worship and learn and grow and fellowship and I, I just God just said, man I got this. I, let me do this work. Let me do this work. And, I'm just, I'm just continuing to be overwhelmed at, at watching God validate uh, who we are as a church. And, and He is building this church. It's not us. It's not our smart ideas or our, our, our programs or certainly not our facilities. Um, I, I'm just overwhelmed. Our offering Sunday was, was amazing. Uh, we, we every month we run ahead of budget of what what our, our budget is to meet the, the needs and pay our bills and have money to put back into the ministry um, we have a ton of visitors of guests that come to visit our church and I, I don't know I just want to take a minute and stop and I just want to say Lord thank you thank you for the community church of Mount Pleasant thank you for giving me a new start a new place as a seasoned veteran pastor of 30 plus years uh, this is a this is a neat thing. It's a neat place. It's a good thing, and, and that's that's what I want to talk to you about today in our little devotional time. But uh, be, before I do, uh, let me just give you uh, some updates on on uh, things that are happening in our church. Again, Sunday was an amazing day. I'm thankful for Mike Steiner, who was our Gideon, who came and presented his his uh, the concept of the ministry of the Gideons, which which basically is to get the word of God out in in people's hands, children soldiers, people in prisons, hospitals, hotels, get the, 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 the Word of God is powerful and, and it changes lives. Nothing else can change. I can't change lives. Can you? The, the power of the Word of God is life changing and, and so we're thankful to partner with the Gideons. Thank you for, for partnering with them and encouraging them. And, and then just, just uh, the things that we have this week. Uh, you know, every Tuesday night we meet with, with uh, men that come up here to pray and, and just learn and grow and, and iron sharpens iron, stimulate each other, be accountable. Wednesday night, same thing happens with ladies. They come up here to study the Bible and pray and learn and grow and, and be encouraged. Uh, last Saturday we had a men's prayer breakfast and we had a tremendous amount of guys that came out and it was just fun. We laughed, we ate, uh, we prayed. Uh, 
just such a blessing, and I'm so thankful. This weekend, uh, we're taking about 20 guys down to a place called uh, Woodstock, Georgia, north of Atlanta. The First Baptist Church there, we're going to go to a men's conference, and we're going to listen to preaching and, and worship with seven or 8,000 other men. It's a powerful thing. I've, I've been before, and our, our, I'm so excited about our guys to go and listen and hear and feel that, and they'll come back pumped up and, and inspired. Uh, and, and then Sunday, of course, we'll have our, our uh, church service on Sunday morning at 11. We're going to have our quarterly financial report. We Remember from the beginning, we have set a course of being uh, financially accountable. And, and full disclosure, we'll present to you a, a written form of, in report of basically our, our finances. And we'll do that every quarter. It's, it's public. It's for you. Uh, and our finance team will present that, and I'm so thankful for them. It's not me. I don't, I don't get involved with our finances. Uh, I, I cast the vision, and then I go ask them how God's going to pay for all that. But uh, that'll be fun Sunday, and and then we'll have we'll preach Sunday and have a great time, great music from our band, and then Sunday night is the Super Bowl. Did you notice? I got my Panthers on today. Uh, I, I love football. I love sports. Uh, it's fun. It's a a leather ball there in it that God gives us something to enjoy. I, I love the Panthers. Uh, it's it's our guys. And so Sunday night we're going to have an event here at the church and we're going to have a Super Bowl party. It's going to be fun. We're going to fellowship together and laugh and hopefully yell because our team wins uh, and, and eat. We do a lot of that. But Sunday nights it'll be fun for the church. And then just just uh, just excited about all that stuff. The 13th is February is, is, is Valentine's weekend. So we're planning an, a couple's event that night. It's kind of a date night for, for us to be able to take our wives out and have a nice meal together and, and enjoy together as, as a church. So I'm just really thrilled about all that God has, has, has done in, in a short amount of time. People have, have been saved. Their lives have been changed. They're, they're being focused in, in things of the Lord, maybe that they've never been before. So I, I'm, I'm so humbled. Um, I'm, I'm really overwhelmed at, at what God is doing here. And I'm just thankful for you. I'm thankful for the fact that you're faithful. And you come and you give and you serve. And, uh, and so, so thank you for that. Let me, let me have a, a quick devotional today and then we'll, uh, we'll be finished. I want to I look at a passage in Isaiah chapter 43. Two verses here I just think is very interesting. And, and uh, remember we were kind of talking about new things. We talked about uh, New Year's. This is January. Actually this is February. We, we moved into January. So we're talking about new things that God uh, does. God gave us a new year. And, and, and what I want to talk about today is, is something new that God has done. And, and we find it here in Isaiah chapter 43 verses 18 and 19. And God says this. Remember ye not the former things. Now listen. Keep everything in context. Remember ye not the former things. Neither consider the things of old. Now, I, I like old things. I like old places and, and buildings and cars. and You know, uh, old things have a, a value. And it seems like maybe less and less they're respected. And, but, but look at this. Watch the context of this passage. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Verse 19. Behold, God is speaking. God says, I will do a new thing for you. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Here's what I think God is saying to us in Isaiah chapter 43. I, I think He's saying this. Appreciate the past. Respect the past. Be thankful for the past. But don't live in the past. Don't dwell in the past because the past is over. You know, I, I think about yesterday and I can think of perhaps, you know, man, I could have handled that differently. Maybe I could have done, I should have done that yesterday. 
Do you know what? I can't go back and do that over. Because yesterday is over. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. It's done. Remember it. Reflect on it. Learn from it. Don't live there. It's over. Behold, I will do a new thing for you. A new day. A new opportunity. A new chance. A new responsibility. A new job. A new relationship. God is doing new things today. Now, this passage directly relates back to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 and 18, when he said he makes us new creatures. God, he saves us. He, he, he makes us a new creation. That's what he's referring to when he says, I'm going to do something new for you. I'm, I'm going to make you new. And I'm going to do a new thing for you. And I'm going to give you a new life and a new start. The mistakes you've made in the past. The victories that you have won in the past. I'm going to do something new. Don't live in the past. Those teams that have won Super Bowls in the past, that's great. I'm glad they have a ring. But that's not, that doesn't have anything to do with today. In Sunday's Super Bowl, in the future, God wants to do something new for you. Sometimes you listen to people, and, and you listen to them, and you think, wow. I feel sorry for them because all they talk about is the good old days. All they talk about is the past. That's all they have. That's not all we have. We have today. We have tomorrow. We have next week. And, and so much to look forward to. And God says, Behold, watch. I will do a new thing for you. Don't live in the past. It may have been great. It may have been hard. It may have been difficult. Whatever the past was, it's in the past. Appreciate it. Respect it. But this is a new day. 2016 is a new year. This is a new church. We have a new opportunity to use the talents and the gifts God has given us. Embrace the new things that God has for us. Pursue the future with hope. Because, and, and if you're in a funk right now, if, if you're depressed and struggling and wrestling and, oh man, I'm not... Put that behind you because God wants to do something new for you. I, sound, I don't want to sound like a, <laughs> a TV preacher. <laughs> but He does. He really does. God has plans. God is for you. He has plans to do something new for you today. Give it up. Release the past. Embrace the future. Because God has made you a new creature. You're not who you used to be. That's a good thing probably. It's not, it's not where we are today. It's the direction we're moving into God's future. So, can I encourage you today? Can I give you hope today by saying to you, I will do a new thing for you. God's made you a new creature. You're a new creation in Christ. And He has a whole new world ahead of you in store for you. So, I want you to be encouraged and I want you to get up in the morning excited, jump out of that and say, God, I know you got something new for me today. The past is over. We're not going to be defined by that. We're not going to be a prisoner to that. We are free to move into the future that God has for us. It's new. It's exciting. It's fresh. And it's awesome. Father, thank you for, for the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Thank you for giving us a new life, making us a new creation. Now, God, set us free from our past. That is bondage. And, Lord, I pray that you'd set us free to move into our future. 
see all the new things you have. Thank you, God. Thank you for this encouragement. Thank you for this new church. Thank you. And we anticipate a lot more new things in the future. We love you, Father, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you Sunday.